Good. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for that, Nicola. Um, so my name is Richard Brown. Uh, I'm at King's College, and so I'll be uh, working through the next one hour session, uh, which is going to be on the technical architecture details of, um, of Monai. And throughout the course of this presentation, uh, we'll see how we can use Monai to build uh, powerful and modular workflows. As ever, I'll try and keep the presentation relatively short so that we have more time to run through the notebooks, um, which is really the most beneficial part, I think. Um, yeah. So uh, this is uh, a slide that shows, I think, quite a lot of concepts which you should be familiar with from yesterday. But you know, just to, to run over some of those again. Uh, so Monai is designed to be both flexible and modular. And so for example, there are only two hard uh, external library requirements, those being PyTorch and NumPy. Obviously there's a, a lot more optional external libraries that can be included to leverage um, extra functionality from Monai, but there are only two um, uh, hard requirements. Uh, there are types such as uh, networks, layers, and blocks. And we'll discuss these a little bit more throughout the presentation, but these are just extensions of standard PyTorch classes. Uh, transforms, which we saw yesterday, they're all callable objects. And for the most part, they operate on NumPy arrays. Um, an obvious uh, exception to that might be um, readers, for example, which will generate those NumPy arrays based on the file names. And then towards the end of yesterday's session, Ben worked through uh, some Ignite um, uh, classes and how we can use those for uh, workflows and handlers. And again, we'll go through that uh, a little bit more in detail in the presentation. And, and then you'll really get the chance, the chance to get stuck in in the, um, in the notebooks. So uh, yeah, just a reminder that you know Mono is designed to be uh, completely modular, and those modules should be uh, independent. And so the idea is then that you can, if you think that Monai might be advantageous for a certain aspect of your code, you should hopefully be able to substitute in uh, Monai in that area uh, without having to rewrite the whole of your code base. So um, we hope that you should be able to benefit from Monai with uh, relatively little effort on the user's part. And this uh, interoperability is provided by um, adhering to PyTorch design styles. Uh, we use, we make sure that we use a rigorous continuous integration, and we hope that that means that the um, that the final product at the end is of the highest quality possible. So that's Monai, and here you could uh, you can see a schematic. I think you would have seen this yesterday, and it sort of details all of the different um, modules that build up uh, that build up Monai. And just in this presentation, we're going to be focusing on the bottom left corner. So that's uh, the networks and the sub modules inside of that being blocks, layers and nets. And we'll chat about that in a little bit. And then towards the end, we'll move into uh, this box over here. I hope you can see my mouse um, for engine and handlers towards the right hand side. Uh, and that's really, you know, the workflow type concepts. So if we get uh, jump straight into networks. Uh, Networks, I mean, they sort of are what they say on the tin. So they provide the definitions for the networks, but not only the networks, also the, um, the components that go up to build a network. And uh, these tend to inherit directly from PyTorch classes, such as uh, module and sequential. And as ever, we try to make it um, independent from the rest of Monai so that you can use these networks um, without having to rewrite the whole of your, your code base. Uh, the networks are designed to be general purpose, uh, but they can be parameterized. And that way you can configure your network uh, to deal with any particular problem that you might be trying to, to solve in, in that moment. And as I said, uh, the networks module contains the three sub modules, layers, blocks, and nets, where layers are really the, uh, the lowest level. Um, and they, so, so each of these components sort of builds on the previous. So you, you might stick layers together to build blocks. You might build blocks together to create uh, networks. 
And so blocks are our mid-level building blocks. And I'll give you some, some examples of those on, on the next slide. And then nets are full network definitions. So uh, an easy example of that might be the UNet. And so blocks and networks are created uh, with factories. And this allows them to be uh, completely par uh, parameterized in, in whichever way we want. Uh, so you can easily customize them for whatever you need to be doing in, for that particular problem. And so examples of blocks might be um, convolutions with uh, activation and regularization, uh, residual units, squeeze and excitation, downsampling and upsampling, and subpixel convolutions. And examples of networks might be, for example, the unit, the vnet, and, and so on. And so here you can see an example of a unit um, created with Mono. And you can see from that first comment that it could be either a 2D or a 3D network. And so in this particular example, we've chosen a 2D network. So the images um, are two dimensional and the input images will have one channel and so will the output images. Uh, you can see that it uh, contains three layers and then the, the stride is, is uh, a stride of two for each. Um, yep. So then here's another example. Again, it's a unit. This time the images uh, are three dimensional, still one channel going in, one channel going out. And you can see that this time we've got a four layer um, network. And the, interestingly here, you can see that we've changed the default activation, which is by default the prelude. We've replaced that with a, a leaky prelude. Um, and so, yeah, so that's that. And just as a final word, um, uh, custom layers can be added to all factories. So that's um, everything I think I wanted to say on networks. Um, so if we move forward into work workflows. Uh, so as I said, Ben talked about this uh, yesterday. And so these are all extensions of the Ignite uh, engine classes. And the idea is that they can um, be used uh, so they can encompass the majority of your training process. So this is really handy. Um, it should help you to get rid of uh, a lot of those big for loops, you know, where you're looping across all of your epochs and, and things like that. And so this should help you to reduce your code complexity. Hopefully it'll help you to reduce um, potential sources of error since you're writing less code. Uh, but it's completely optional. And if you prefer to use another framework such as Lightning or Catalyst, uh, you're perfectly free to do that as well. Beneath, uh, you can see an example. Uh, and so, um, you know, a trainer is created based on a network. The network could have been, for example, one of the ones which we had on, on the previous slides. Um, and then here you can see that we're creating a checkpoint handler. And so this uh, checkpoint handler is going to save uh, the current state of the network. And you can see n equals 10. So it's going to save the 10 uh, most recent versions. So I suppose as you create the 11th, you'll delete the, the first one and so on. So you only ever keep the 10 most recent. Uh, and then add that as an event so that it gets uh, run uh, at the end of each completed epoch and then set the trainer to run. And uh, so that's it. So hopefully you can see that if you do this, you should be able to condense your code down a little bit. And, uh, and yeah, just hopefully make holding your code base a, a little bit more simple. So that's workflows. Leading on from that, you have evaluators and handlers. And so, um, Evaluator objects are used to measure properties of the network during the training. And then handlers for calculating metrics uh, can be associated to perform analysis. So uh, beneath, you can see an example um, of an evaluator used to calculate the area under the curve metric. And it does so at the end of uh, each epoch. So here you can see the metric. And we create the evaluator. Um, much in the same way as we created the supervised network, uh, supervised trainer beforehand. And then uh, you can see that this is then going to get run at the end of uh, every uh, epoch. And then again, 
you know, just uh, tell it to run and set it to go. Uh, you can see all it's doing here is it's going to evaluate it, the area under the curve, and then it's going to print it. And you can see the comment here saying, well, it'd probably be more useful to put this into a log, but I mean, this is just for the, the sake of, uh, of showing a simple example. So, so far, I think we've chatted about networks um, that are created, uh, that are part of Monai um, and the blocks that come with it. Uh, we've talked about workflows and we've talked about evaluators and handlers. And I think that's all uh, I wanted to talk about on, on those uh, topics. Then uh, inside of Mono, we have a couple of other modules. For example, we have losses. You know, uh, you can get your dice loss uh, and things like that. Uh, metrics, um, so that you can assess the quality of your networks. Uh, we've got our C source, that's just where we keep all of our, our interfacing to our CUDA code. Um, hopefully you won't have to get too, uh, you won't have to delve too deeply into that. And then we have all of the, uh, the other ones. For example, in the config, you'll have used that a few times to print the configuration so you can see which versions of all of, all of the import libraries you have and so on and so forth. You know, visualization, those sorts of things. That's, uh, that's everything I wanted to say on modules, I think. And that I think is everything that I wanted to say on it, all in all. So I think it's a great moment to get, uh, get stuck into the notebooks. Yesterday, uh, there was a, a notebook that we didn't get around to finishing. So that was the day one lab three on networks. So I would advise you first to have a look at that. It should be relatively simple. Um, if you have any problems, as always, put it in the uh, in the Slack channel and we can help you work through it. But I think that shouldn't take you too long. And then you can get into looking at uh, the day two lab one. Uh, and this is to uh, use a, a GAN to generate hand images from the MEDNIS data. Uh, if you're not sure what a GAN is, uh, again, feel free to let us know in the Slack. We can uh, explain it as a relatively simple concept in a, in a couple of minutes. Uh, and so some of the learning uh, objectives from this notebook should be uh, being able to create your own reader. So I know there was a question in Slack yesterday uh, asking about, I think it was opening uh, MGZ nifty files. So once you've seen this example, you should be able to create any reader of your own needs as long as you can read the image and at, uh, output it as, for example, a, a NumPy array. Then, uh, then you're good to go. So this should help you, give you an idea how you might be able to do that. Then you'll leverage uh, Monai's generator and discriminating networks. Uh, just a couple of notes. The training in this network, in this notebook takes a while. So I would really advise you to sort of skip ahead to where that training takes place. Um, so, you know, execute the cells relatively quickly. And then you can go back whilst it's, uh, whilst it's training so that you can read uh, about all of the ins and outs. And depending on how powerful your GPU is or not, there is uh, obviously the uh, number of epochs that you can play with. Uh, you would assume that if you don't use too many epochs, your images aren't gonna look too good at the end, uh, but maybe at the end of the, uh, the boot camp, if you want, you can increase those, or you know, if you wanna mess around with it this evening or anything like that. Um, so the day two lab one is for the most part uh, just you know, sort of click it, follow through, read uh, what's going on and try and learn. Um, so towards the end, if you manage to work your way through that relatively quickly, I want to set you the challenge. And uh, the challenge is that uh, the optimization loop in the day two, uh, day two lab one uh, uses sort of this for loop. And so it's a prime example of where you could replace it with one of uh, Monai's workflow classes or Ignite if you want. Uh, so my challenge to you is to replace, uh, or you know, in a in a cell at the bottom, to be able to do the same thing as what's going on higher up, but to be using the Mono workflow classes instead. And there's a big hint that uh, there is a Mono tutorial which does a very similar uh, thing. So if you can find that tutorial, so that should help you uh, get familiar with our, our our GitHub repositories. Then I think you should be able to do this with relative ease. I hope. Uh, just as a word of warning, uh, only because I made this mistake and it cost me quite a lot of time, just be really careful when you're working in uh, Jupyter Notebooks about, you know, the names of your variables. Uh, if you're copying things from our examples um, uh, repository, 
just be careful about the, the names of the variables because obviously the scope of the Jupyter notebooks is that the, the variable names uh, stay in memory for the whole time. Um, that's it. Are there any questions? If not, I think uh, I'll show you quickly where the day three, uh, day one lab three is and then where the day two lab one is. Um, I'm not sure how to see any questions. I suppose I'll stop sharing first. So if there are any questions, please unmute yourself. It should be possible today. And if not, in the meantime, I think I can. Can you still see my screen if I come off PowerPoint? Yes. Yeah, cool. So in the Mono Bootcamp uh, repository, you should see the day one notebooks. And so this is the first one you'll be doing, the lab three networks. And then once you've run your way through that, hopefully it shouldn't take you too long. Then there's also the day two notebooks and we'll be working through day two Mednist uh, GAN tutorial. So then you can work your way through that one. And as I say, um, once you can, I'll just very quickly show you. Um, here is the, the bit which I think is perfect for replacing this with a, a workflow. So uh, if you manage to work your way through both of those uh, net notebooks quick enough, then, then that's my challenge to you. Um, okay. And so I'll share my screen quickly. And hopefully, hopefully you can see my screen. If you can't, just uh, give me a shout, Nicola. So uh, yes, yeah, so this is the the day one lab three with the networks, and hopefully it all made um, sense. So here you can just see we're doing all of the normal imports uh, and printing the uh, the mono configure, um, so we can figure out which uh, versions of the uh, optional libraries we have, so on and so forth. And so then we start by looking at the convolution. And if we print the docs, we can see that we can either have convolution or the transpose of the convolution. And then in the cell beneath, you can see that it takes two arguments. So is it either the convolution or the transpose? And how many dimensions is it? And when you print that, you can see that all it's doing is returning the, um, the PyTorch um, convolution. And uh yeah so you can see that this will just give us a nice way of, of accessing the those uh um uh pytorch uh, classes and then we can uh create an instance of it by passing in the uh the arguments of the number of channels that we want and the kernel sizes and then we can print that so whether we want it to be 2d or 3d and with kernel sizes so on and so forth then we have a look at the activations. You can see that there's loads of different type of activations that you can have, and we can create them much in the same way uh, as we did with the convolutions. Uh, on top of that, we can do it with uh, a tuple where we give it the, the name and uh, a dictionary of arguments. And so you can see that the output here is the same as the output down here. So um, multiple ways of, of uh, achieving the same goal. And then we can stick all that together to create a, um, a network and the network consists of a convolution and activation and then pooling. And we define the forward pass. Uh, so then I think, I think that's it. So then we can, we can use that network we've just created so we can have a, uh, we can use the default network. We can create a 2D network. We can take, create a 3D network and at the end of each one we can print it and so this is the default network this is the 2D network that we um, that we created just here and then lastly we can create the 3D network and print it and that's going to be this one down here um, 
so that's it for this uh, for the first uh, notebook. Hopefully, it's uh, fairly straightforward. So it just shows you how you can uh, create the different components, the different blocks um, of the network and how you can stick those together to create a network. So then when you get into the day two lab one, uh, you'll see some examples of um, uh, predefined networks so that you don't uh, give it the component each time. Um, okay, so that's uh, the day one lab three networks notebook. So if you're all okay with that, uh, if there are any problems, again, let us know on the Slack channel. And if not, I guess you'll be working through the day two lab one. All right. Two lab one, so that's the gen generative adversarial networks with the MEDNIST data. Um, I forgot to say, I, I, had a, I had a joke written for the, uh, for the start of my presentation as I heard, well, you know, all good presentations to start with a joke. Uh, and inevitably, I forgot the joke, so uh, make of that what you will. Uh, but the joke was this, um, where does Dracula keep his moni in the blood bank? Pause for laughter. Good, okay, so let's get stuck into the, uh, the second notebook. Um, and so, yeah, so you, you, in this one, you'll see how to load the data from a remote source. So that's the, uh, so that's the extra um, uh, reader load data that we were looking at, we were talking about earlier. And then how to construct, well, the, the rest is, is all uh, constructing a data set from the, the data and the transforms, creating a network and then training and evaluating. So this is all stuff that you've uh, seen a few times. So all of the normal imports, um, printing the configuration that uh, you'll have seen a few times. So the terminism so for, uh, for reproducibility. And then here we've got some of the, the training variables and we'll discuss some of those as we go through the notebook. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything that I particularly want to go over uh, of these. So uh, the data is the MEDNIS data, and we've got a copy hosted on this Dropbox. And so we're going to download it. And here we get a tar.gz, which we could uh, just unzip and then work our way through the file names. Um, uh, but here instead, we've decided to uh, peek inside of it. And so we can use uh, the tar.extract file on the, the file name inside of it, and then we can use the plot in read. So uh, in this way, we've created our own reader, which is capable of reading inside of the, the tar file and uh, getting the image from there. And so instead of our load image that we might have had in other uh, notebooks here, we've got our own uh, modified reader. So as I said, once you've wrapped your head around this idea, you should very easily be able to uh, implement your own uh, data loaders uh, your, um, as, as, as you need. Um, so then, you know, we do the cache data set, the data loader, this you'll have seen quite a few times by now. And then we can create both the discriminator and the generator uh, networks where uh, our images are going to be 64 by 64. Uh, you can see the number of channels for our uh, convolutional layers as we work our way through. And um, yeah, just uh, uh, I think more things that you should be fairly familiar with by now and um, uh, we'll create our generator as well. So obviously, as you know, with GANs, there are two independent networks which are competing with each other. So as your generator gets better at generating more realistic images, uh, then your discriminator gets better at distinguishing which one's real, uh, which one's fake. And that uh, then pushes the generator to do a better job of generating more realistic images. That's the, the idea anyway. Um, so yes, we've got those uh, networks. Uh, we decide what our losses should be. Um, so we're using the binary cross entropy, which is what you'd normally do for a, um, a binary classification 
uh, process. And then our discriminator loss is, uh, we use that to say um, how well our discriminator managed to distinguish between the real and the generated images. And then our generator loss is how well it managed to fool the discriminator. That's it. Uh, put it all into the uh, the optimization loop. And so you can see that here, we'll create a random tensor. So this is our, our latent space, and we'll use that to generate uh, new images. Uh, and from that, we can uh, calculate the loss on our, um, uh, based on those generated images. And then here, you can see two of the variables that were um, further up the page where the discriminator training interval was set to one and the discriminator training set was set to five. So in this way, you can balance how much generating you want to do versus how much discriminating you want to do. So because this was uh, one on every iteration, we're going to step inside and then we're going to run five loops um, inside of here where we'll be calculating our discriminator loss. Um, and then that's it. And then uh, we set it to run and print the output. And I think you should see that once we've, um, once we've trained it and we've got our network um, so that we're happy with it, we can then use it. We can create more latent uh, random tensors, which we can then use to generate and create some test images and we can plot them here. And they look like something out of a horror film. There is a little comment um, above it saying that, you know, if you manage to increase the number of epochs, maybe you'd end up with uh, nicer images. So that's that, that's the, the network. And then I set you the task of being able to um, do the same thing, but replace this, uh, this for loop using the, uh, the workflows. And I think if you have a look, so I said, I said it was in, tutorials repository uh, and if you have a look inside of modules and then the Mednis GAN workflow array that seems pretty close to what we're doing right now and if you have a scroll down so this looks very similar to what we've just been working our way through um, in the uh, notebook here again, we create a discriminator, we create our generator. This is all exactly the same. You know, um, we create our um, the, uh, our generator and discriminator classes are all the same. So so far, everything is exactly the same. Now we're going to create our um, our handlers, so that's going to tell us, you know, um, for example, we've got a checkpoint saver to, uh, we saw this in the presentation, to uh, save the process of the, the progression of the network as, as we go through the optimization process. And we can also have um, stats handlers and, and metric loggers so that we can print what's going on and later on we can, we can make some nice graphs. Um, and then, so then this is the important thing. Uh, trainer, correct me, a GAN trainer, and then you just feed everything in as uh, as an argument. So again, you know, the number of epochs is 50. That's the same as it was in the in the notebook. The discriminator training steps is five. Again, that's the same. So this should, all of the variables should be very similar. And then you should just be able to set it to go. Um, get a lot of output. Sorry about that. Should have truncated it. <laughs> And yeah, let me switch back to. This one. Um, so you create the, the GAN trainer in the same way as we did before. And then we can print it in the same way as we did before. So you should notice hopefully that, that this graph here looks very, very similar to the graph that we had. I'll scroll slowly so anyone gets motion sick. Uh, should look very similar to this graph that we had here. So we've done the exact same thing, but we've managed to substitute out that big long for loop, which was maybe slightly convoluted. And instead we can use the uh, Mono GAN trainer workflow instead. Um, 
And then again, we just generate some more hands to show that, that everything's still working as we expected. So that's it for those two notebooks. Um, I hope that you've learned something about the uh, networks module and the submodules inside of that in Monai. And then maybe also you have a better idea of how to use the workflows uh, from Monai. Um, yep, thank you.